Well, let me quickly get organized. While I'm doing so, I have to tell you at least one story where my very first one of these, the mayor, then mayor of Osseo, was talking to me and saying, well, you're, you're brand new to a, a mayor, so you'll be last. So I sit down, I'm eating, I have a mouthful, and who do you think they call first? <laughs> I still have not let him forget that, and he doesn't let me forget it as well. So, uh, Tim from uh, Century Lake, I think it was. I have to uh, admit that I have been uh, a customer, DSL wise, for probably the last 20 years. I've been very pleased with the service. Uh, from CenturyLink and its former names uh, as well. I've moved houses and, and CenturyLink has been kind enough to move all of the equipment and all the pieces for me. Uh, and that was a few years ago. But um, I did hear one gigabyte and I'm a chief technology officer with the state of Minnesota so I'm looking very forward to getting one gigabyte service. Fib fiber is good. <laughs> okay. I don't know if Dave is counting that as my time as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I will start with this first slide and I say uh, hello ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests for North Hennepin Area Chamber of Commerce, thank you for the opportunity to share the state of the city of Brooklyn Center with you today. Man. It would be very embarrassing <laughs> for a chief technology officer if this doesn't go right. <clears throat> Brooklyn Center continues to evolve as we experience yet another year with substantial progress in meeting our strategic goals. Each year we build on and add to our successes to our community. Our strong working relationships with residents, businesses, community partners, and other agencies continue to accelerate our progress. Today, I will be sharing some highlights of our strategic pro uh, priorities with you. Um, those priorities are here on the presentation and I'll start with the very first one, uh, civic engagement. In January 2014, a delegation from Brooklyn Center visited our sister city, Buenjama, in Lofa County, Liberia. Uh, myself, city council member, uh, Mr. Bogany, uh, one of our uh, community liaisons, uh, went to our sister city at that time and uh, we're very impressed with what we saw there. We are very committed to our residents from uh, foreign countries, from other countries, uh, people who have immigrated into uh, Brooklyn Center and uh, we felt so strong about it that we funded that trip with our own dollars. So, unfortunately, uh, at that, shortly thereafter, uh, Liberia is one of the countries in West Africa that was affected by the Ebola virus outbreak. Um, leaders in the African community, along with the cities of Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, created an Ebola task force to provide education and support for those affected by the outbreak, either directly or indirectly. Presentations were also provided to the public to address perceptions about the outbreak. Uh, the uh, Minnesota Department of Health has been in both of our cities uh, a couple, numerous times actually, to present information on Ebola. This led us to another activity, which was fine-tuning our emergency management plan in order to better prepare us for our potential case, cases in our community. We continue to extend our support for our residents and others who have family and friends in the affected areas in West Africa. Our sister city's mayor is in that picture there, and uh, I was very, very proud to meet her. They treated us very well. <clears throat> the Joint Community Police Partnership, JCPP, continues to be recognized for building stronger relations with the police and community. Its work has been recognized locally, nationally, and globally. It is the collaborative effort of the cities of Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park, Richfield, Hennepin County, and the Northwest Human Services Council. A delegate 
from Denmark visited Brooklyn Center to review our policies and practices in building trust and positive community police relations. It's not the first time we've had uh, a visitor from overseas come to see uh, what we are doing in that respect. In October, Chief Banner, Chief Banner visited Denmark and met with their law enforcement leaders. A successful program in Denmark called Dialogue Project has many similarities to the programs uh, that we have here uh, between the cities and the county as well. Ensuring the success of our youth not only improves our current quality of life, but also ensures the success of our future. We have several programs underway, and I would like to highlight at least one of them that is very, very dear to me, and I know it is to uh, Mayor Lundy from Brooklyn Park as well, uh, in the commitment and involvement he has also. The Brooklyn Bridge Alliance for Youth, in joint partnership with Brooklyn Park, is a multi-agency youth success initiative that I'm honored to be chairing and have chaired for a while. Its original conception was a meeting, a lunch, something like this between uh, the then Mayor Lampe uh, of Brooklyn Park and myself, and that was back in 2007 or so. Very, very happy to say that that commitment continues with the people who are involved, the cities, the colleges, the schools. Um, this mission is to build communities where youth can thrive and succeed by reducing their experience with crime, by increasing graduation rates, and by increasing pathways to college or careers. There's a joint powers agreement. It's just been renew renewed for the next three years. Um, and there has been a uh, launch on the website. I think everybody has a website now, but um, it's here on the board if you wish to go visit it, and I certainly would have you uh, encourage youth to visit it. There's over 500 quality youth programs that are available there. In 2015, a youth employment program will be developed. This is made possible through the successful fundraising of a 100,000 matching grant. Collaboratively, during that fundraising effort, a quarter million dollars was raised to put this initiative uh, to work and to implement it. We'll be reaching out to you in the community uh, for input and support as we develop this youth program. The program looks at how can we better train our young people how can we use um, our young people with our businesses in either scholarships or internships or things of that nature where they can get experience in how to be a good employee. Not to mention how to spend money and a few other things that I know my teenagers had a lot of trouble with. So. Um, building a community amphitheater. Um, this is another very dear uh, project to me as well and to Brooklyn Center. Um, I think our former mayor, uh, Cohen, who passed away um, a few uh, months ago, um, was very instrumental in our city in building community and very in instrumental in this amphitheater project. Uh, we've had a couple of years of diligent grassroots fundraising efforts by a team of citizens who have volunteered their time on this committee. They've raised more than $340,000, in, including a $150,000 donation by the Luther Auto Group. And I mention that because that's significant, and they have been uh, a very good corporate neighbor. There are brick pavers still available for purchase this spring, uh, and the purchase is tax deductible. So we look forward to groundbreaking yet this year. All right, I'm in sync. Commercial development and construction remains strong as <laughs> several projects are underway. 
We uh, continue to do redevelopment. The Luther organization is bringing in another dealership, uh, Volkswagen dealership, and uh, continuing to build up that Brooklyn Boulevard corridor. We have leading efforts in redevelopment. We have purchased the property, 46 acres, just north of uh, where uh, Brookdale used to be. Uh, and we're going to take that property and redevelop it and remarket it as well. The Urban Heritage Center, I would be very remiss in not mentioning uh, this establishment. The Urban Heritage Center is a great asset for Brooklyn Center and will be celebrating its 25th anniversary. I would hope that a number of you would help us celebrate that. Uh, it is the original Earl Brown Farmstead. It's been transformed into an award-winning conference and event center, yet it maintains its rich history for uh, Brooklyn Center. I have to mention as well in the notes that, um, if Vicki's here, was so kind to put together for me, that um, uh, the Earl Brown Heritage Center has just been awarded the Knott's Best Weddings Award, and it's only given to the top 2% of wedding venues. Providing a sense of community. Um, we have many efforts to improve our image uh, in Brooklyn Center. Uh, based on feedback, we created a shop, eat, and meet map, um, which is here and still there. <laughs> um, for uh, individuals coming into our uh, city to learn about what's new, what's coming in, what is there for amenities. Other actions taken to ensure our organization has an inclusive cultural and will have the necessary tools to serve our diverse community was started in 2013. We will be incorporating uh, inclusion and diversity as a business strategy we have for a few years already but this year alone we'll be creating um, an inclusion and diversity council to implement recommendations to the council to deal with our many citizens in Brooklyn Center who have uh, a very rich uh, diverse background am I close we, um, we've been recognized as a safe and secure community. Uh, stats, which are fairly boring, and I won't go through those at the moment, but are significantly down for uh, crime statistics uh, this past year uh, compared to prior years. We're maintaining our financial stab stability and our AA rating, and I want to get to this one for sure. By the way, this uh, presentation will be online or you can get it from City Hall as well. But we're doing major infrastructure improvements to support the <laughs> redevelopment that we have in Brooklyn Center and to re uh, support the residents we have in providing, in this case, clean water based on information we had gotten about a year ago. And this project has taken off in a year's time for a political entity to put it together and start construction is extremely amazing and shows the commitment of the council in uh, Brooklyn Center in providing good quality drinking water. We've had significant private investment in Brooklyn Center from um, individuals uh, across the nation, uh, certainly out of state as well. Um, we've had another exceptional year with commercial construction and home improvements. Uh, a bellwether of that is the 64 million uh, in permits that were pulled in 2014 for new construction, for residential construction, for business construction. Um, it doesn't include um, the uh, water treatment plant, which also has to pull its own permits, and it raises that value to about 77 million for 2014, that is about a three times increase in those permits and in, uh, investment in Brooklyn Center. Housing value and market values continue to improve. Uh, we're very happy to see that, but 
from um, our residents' perspective, they're going to see higher taxes as the uh, homes that they have appreciate in value. That will, though, shift that tax market and that tax revenue away from commercial, uh, which has been the previous couple of years uh, trend, uh, to more residential as uh, those homes appreciate. We also have a program, and I'll be brief, I know I'm over already, um, for NSP, Neighborhood Stabilization Program, we've been purchasing homes, uh, properties, and uh, either restoring them, rejuvenating them, or having new homes built on those properties. We have done something like 12 of them, uh, either in progress or have been completed, and we had two this summer that uh, sold for more than $180,000 in Brooklyn Center. It's a very fine achievement, and those are very brand new homes uh, with new residents coming into Brooklyn Center. I see I'm a little bit behind. The end. Have a safe and prosperous 2015. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.